Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us here for Creme 2 News. First at 4, I'm Whitney Ward. Well, tonight, snow has covered much of the inland northwest, and as temperatures continue to drop, it will create the possibility for some pretty icy roads out there. So we begin tonight with our team coverage as we track this storm. Our Kyle Simchuk is in the storm tracker right now as we look at current road conditions. First, though, we want to go straight to our chief meteorologist, Jeremy Lagoo, as we talk about what is headed here already and what's still to come. Oh, it's a big one, especially as we head into the next couple of days. Big story here. Notice it says Wednesday, but our Arctic air is in place right now. I always say you need three ingredients. Uh, we're heading into the holidays, so baking is a good comparison. You have the wrong ingredients in your cookies. They're going to turn out flat, fall apart, everything. You name it. I don't really know much about making cookies, but what I do know about is weather, and you need the right ingredients put together for the right amount of time. So baking is a pretty good analogy. Today we got a little bit of snow. What we were missing was a good chunk of moisture and a bigger storm, but as we head through the next couple of days, we actually have that in place. Right now we sit at 23 degrees, so it is cold. That cold air is a big part of getting an incoming storm to do its thing. Notice a little bit of snow works its way into North Idaho. This storm, kind of a normal North Idaho event. We got a little bit here in eastern Washington, but that little bit, and it's relative, is really all we're going to get for now. Notice a little bit more, kind of sweeps the region as the storm moves its way out. Most of that stays in Idaho. Tomorrow's kind of our dry day, and then look what sets up over the Cascades by tomorrow night. That is our next storm system. That next storm system already has winter storm watches in place. Those winter storm watches remain in place for about, uh, well, okay, hold on. This one is our winter weather advisory for today. Sorry, mixed up my two graphics, but basically winter storm watch in place for this. Wednesday's storm offers quite a bit of snow. Five to 10 is likely, I think six to eight is kind of more likely here in Spokane. I think a foot is possible in Coeur d'Alene. Sandpoint could be looking at 18 inches or more. This is Wednesday into Thursday. I'll have more details on this major winter storm coming up in the full forecast. My goodness, Jeremy, thank you very much. And that certainly falls in line with what Jeremy was talking about for the overall winter predictions. This winter weather, just the beginning. You can check out our chief meteorologist, Jeremy Lagoo's long range winter forecast, which covers how the rest of the season is likely to shape up as a third La Nina winter is upon us. And you can find that. Just go to our website, creme.com. You can also find it on our Creme 2 YouTube channel or on Creme 2 Plus. And if you don't have Creme 2 Plus, it's really easy. You can download it right now on Amazon Fire or Roku. And as we continue to track this current storm, the conditions are making for very icy roads. So our Kyle Simchuk is in the Creme 2 storm tracker right this minute, and he's checking out how the roads are looking right now. Kyle, how does it look out there? Well, Whitney, things are a little slick, you know, neighbor residential streets, they have a lot more uh, snowpack, obviously, on the road. But when we look at arterials, they're in a little better shape. We're at 20th and Freya, and as we were just coming down, we did see um, a car that had slid off the road and into someone's fence. Freya always seems to be a problem uh, this time of year. We checked in with the city. They say that crews are officially in winter operations, and that means teams are working 20 hours a day to monitor, pre-treat, and plow roads, and they're paying attention to problem areas like hills, like Freya, and arterial streets. Those are always on the top of the priority list. Now, the city has satellite locations in four corners of the city, and that saves crews time when they need to refill on sand and de-icer. And as you can see here, we're coming up on this wreck. Someone uh, just kind of went off the road into this fence here. Freya is pretty slippery right now, even though it is a top priority. We asked city communications manager Kirsten Davis what citizens can do to help snow crews. Take a listen. Park on the odd side of the street. That's super helpful, especially in those neighborhoods where there's a lot of on street parking and the streets maybe not as wide. Think about if you were trying to get an emergency vehicle to your home and, and what that would look like. Now, during a full city plow, when there's four or more inches of snow on the road, crews will work 24 hours a day in 12 hour shifts. And that full city plow used to take four days. Now the city says it can be done in three days thanks to new equipment. Now again, back here on the road looking at Freya, we're at 26th and Freya going up. Drivers definitely uh, taking their time. Uh, this road is slick and again, one of the top priorities for the city. 
Uh, we're going to keep monitoring the roads throughout the show. We'll check back in later. Whitney. All right, Kyle, thank you very much. A good reminder that we all need to be very, very careful as we head through the next several days because it will be very slippery for quite a while. Also developing tonight, these freezing conditions and consistently low temperatures are causing delays for the Thor Freya construction project. It was expected to wrap up by last Friday, but of course, that has not happened yet. So construction actually began back in March and at the time it was expected to take about six months. Well, the city shared that the weather is causing delays in the final concrete pouring sections. The low temperatures cause this concrete to cure five times slower than normal. So practice patience. Tonight, we are also learning new details about a violent crash that split a car in two on Spokane South Hill last week. Spokane County court documents that were filed today say the driver in this crash is now being investigated for driving under the influence of cannabis. Krem 2's Amanda Rowley has the latest details tonight. The driver of this car, now split into two, survived the violent crash. But now Spokane police are investigating him for driving while under the influence of cannabis. Spokane County search warrants filed today detail what led up to the crash, along with the driver's comments at the hospital. The crash happened on Friday morning near the South Hill Rose Hours on 29th Avenue. Court documents say a Spokane police officer was parked when he spotted the white Acura driving on 29th Avenue. The officer confirmed the car was speeding at 67 miles per hour in a 30 mile per hour zone. That's when the officer turned on his lights in an effort to stop the driver. The officer said as the Acura approached the intersection of 29th Avenue and South Southeast Boulevard, the driver swerved to avoid another car that turned eastbound onto 29th. The Acura then came back across the lanes and hit the sign pole, ripping the car in two. Kathy Brooks told us that morning she can't believe she wasn't hit. As he passed me, he just lost control of the car and went flying into the pillars and, I mean, his car's in half. Police interviewed the driver at Sacred Heart Medical Center. He told police he didn't really remember what happened and kept asking questions. When the officer asked the driver about drinking, the man said he does not like alcohol, but admitted he probably smoked weed. The driver also said he hadn't smoked that day and may have last smoked the night before, also claiming he smokes a bowl a day. The officer reported the driver was repetitive and forgetful, but it is not clear if it was related to head trauma from the crash or something else. Police filed the search warrant for a blood sample to determine the blood alcohol level and quantity of any drugs that may have impaired his ability to drive. In the search warrant, police state there is probable cause to charge the driver with attempting to elude a police vehicle and DUI, but charges have not yet been filed. Amanda Rowley. Krem 2 News. Tonight, we have new information on the murders of four University of Idaho students. Police shared a new timeline now for the night those students were killed. Detectives are now saying the surviving roommates had arrived home just after 1 a.m. 45 minutes later, the victims, Ethan Chapin and Zana Kernodal, arrived at the home on Kings Road. Now, thanks to new digital evidence that was collected by investigators, we know that Kaylee Gonzalez and Madison Mogan arrived home separately at 1.56 a.m. Moscow police say community members have uploaded now almost 500 digital media submissions to help in their investigation, and they are encouraging people to continue sending them anything that might help, any tip at all. Police also have collected 113 pieces of physical evidence. All of them have now been sent to the Idaho Police Crime Lab. Moscow police also clarified there does not appear to be any connection between two other stabbings across the Pacific Northwest. Those incidents included a 1999 double stabbing in Pullman and a 2021 double stabbing in Salem, Oregon. Meanwhile, tonight we are hearing from Zana Kernodal's father for the first time. He told our CBS affiliate in Phoenix that Zana fought back against her attacker. Bruises, and just, you know, maybe hurt by the knife or whatever. Yeah. She's a tough kid. Whatever she wanted to do, she, she could do it. 
Her father was too distraught to be on camera remembering the life of his daughter, but he said he was struggling just to understand how this could have happened. He said Zana was just hanging out at home with her boyfriend, Ethan, one of the other victims in the attack. We, he also shared this quote saying she didn't really worry about the drama and stuff that much. She was never into that. He said she just liked having fun and was never about materialistic things. And as we look ahead to this coming Wednesday, the University of Idaho will be holding a candlelight vigil for the four victims starting at 5 p.m. That is on Wednesday. There will also be a remote option for people who cannot make it in person. The exact location has not yet been released. They are currently working on that. Last week, a memorial service was also held for Ethan on the west side. And on Friday, there will be a memorial service for all four of the victims, then a separate memorial for Maddie and Kaylee is in the works but has yet to be announced. And today, students are back at the University of Idaho campus. As students are coming back, they'll see an increased presence in local security and in law enforcement. However, last week, the university president said students who want to stay home, they can. They can finish their classes online. Some students say, though, they do feel safer coming back to Moscow and getting back into a routine. Krem2 spoke with students who say it's been difficult to ignore the realities of what happened there. Coming back, I feel a lot safer with, you know, I see Idaho State Patrol out, I see Moscow PD, I see the Hell's Canyon security. I feel a lot safer now. I really enjoy being here at this campus. I, I feel safe here. It's been a little confusing. I think it's taken everyone by surprise. Uh, and it's just been kind of getting through it, you know, for me, getting through my classes and um, just kind of, yeah, trying to push through. The school president says the university will be flexible now in the final two weeks of the semester. The university is still planning to hold its graduation ceremonies coming up on December 10th. And as we mentioned, law enforcement still asking for any information that might help them solve this case. That tip line has been set up alongside the FBI. It is 208-883-7180. You can also send an email. That address is underneath that number at the bottom of your screen. You can send tips that way as well. And of course, we are continuing to track this investigation very closely. For the latest, remember, you can always go to our website, crim.com.